Tell us a little bit about your time in JUCO. Um, I definitely, you know, like like I say, man, that that, that JUCO experience is one of none. Um, I'm I'm definitely blessed. I I got put through it. Um, um, based off of what I did, but it's kind of just like a time to reflect, time to um, self-reflect and see what's going on and, and, you know, how to adapt. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's still college football. There's a lot of great guys, a lot of great teams you play. So just being able to, you know, get that experience and, and get that hunger, it kind of it helps me at, at a level like this in the SEC, just knowing and, you know, being humbled by the, 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 the JUCO process. And so I'm just I'm just thankful for it. Um, it was hard, you know. It wasn't it wasn't easy. It was, you know, hard some days. You know, it just humbles you, like I said. So, and then it builds you back up. So, just being able to make it out of there and, you know, become a JUCO product is, you know, the best feeling ever. So, with the transfer portal prospects going going to Auburn last year, uh, transferring there, what was that whole experience like? And what is your experience like going into the SEC? Um, man, you know, I, I got one of you know a crazy story. Uh, I got to Auburn in August, academic trouble happened to finish a class um, in the summer. So I wasn't able to report until the start of fall camp. So I got to Auburn August 3rd and camp started the 4th. So it was kind of like a situation where I was thrown right into the fire. Um, I prepared myself super well for it, you know, just telling myself like, okay, well, you put yourself in this situation. So now you, you got to try your best to be in the best shape, you know, the best mental space to, to, to get going and get put in the fire. So being able to go in and, and um, just adjust to it. So the whole year was kind of like, me just trying to adjust to it. That's why this spring, it, you know, it was really important for me. It was, you know, my first spring in, in a Power 5 conference and just getting able to see why, you know, the spring and the summer is important um, after only having a fall last year. It's definitely something I'm thankful for. And, you know, it's the process of the process. What type of person could you compare your your personality to on what you have seen as an athlete on the field? There, there are a lot of interesting athletes. Cam Newton, for one, you come from Auburn. Very uh, loud spoken, wears a lot of crafty hats, dresses very interesting, uh, very good personality. And Cam, I met him at an, uh, I think it was an auction. It was, and he shows up wow. and he's and he's buying a bunch of stuff from the auction. And I said, "Holy crap, that's Cam Newton <laughs> sitting there." Nobody even knows it's Cam Newton. He stands up. He's like six foot five, six foot six, and he's built like an ox because he really is. What type of player do you accustomly, you know? Try to compare your personality to uh, on the football field. Never got a question like that, right? <laughs> What'd you say? You never got a question like that, have you? Yeah, no. I just, as far as like personality goes, I think I would definitely, maybe not even on the on the field. It wouldn't be a person on the field. I definitely think it would be like kind of like a LeBron James kind really? of just what he, for, like off the field. I feel like that's something I'm looking forward to doing. Um, you know, when I get in position to. Just being able to, you know, do what he has done in the, in his community and stuff like that. That's mm. that's something I, that, you know, that drives me and, and, and something I want to be in a position to also do. I feel like that what he's doing is, is is the way he's supposed to do it, you know, taking care of himself but, and his family, but also, you know, being able to take care of other people and, and help kids and stuff like that. That's definitely something I look to get into. But as far as, like, personality on the field, I definitely would still, I guess I would just say Jalen Ramsey, just the way he plays the game. His attitude towards the game. Oh, so you you know? you, you you talk like him, huh? You, you're out there on the field talking crap. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't say talk crap, but I definitely <laughs> my head, my head, I'm 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 at, I'm at him. Like you know, it's like it's like when a helmet clicks on, it's it's just like a different person. It's just like I'm 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 free. I'm able to like mm. express myself and let all the you know all the anger and all the everything out. Let it all. That's great, man. He's good. Hey, listen. I, I don't care if you talk crap. You got to just put it on the field. You can talk whatever you want. So basically, just don't be Eli Apple in your phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a second. Eli has had a you know the last couple of years has been pretty good for you. He Apple. was decent last year. Oh, decent. And now, Get out of here. He, decent. He and now he's unsigned for a reason. <laughs> he was unsigned because he wants a lot of money and and he believes his talents deserve that. He played for the Bengals, man. That team was right there. They were right on the cusp. So stop it, Speedy. Stop attacking Eli Apple. I know he's a mama's boy. He has always been a mama's boy, and his mother likes to, you know, sell him in every kind of way. And now his mom had to delete his Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> or her, twi- her Twitter. 